Yes, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the THI Podcast, brought to you by TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, joining me as he always does. It's our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And AJ, we're here for another Carolina basketball portal-related podcast. We're going to be hitting on two guys that we know for a fact Carolina has contacted, and one of which is is actually on his OV um, as, as the time of this recording. So the two we're going to be focusing on, Cormac Ryan, Notre Dame guy hit the transfer portal. He's the guy that saw, started his OV on Tuesday, April 18th. We're recording this on Wednesday, April 19th, currently still on his visit as of right now. Matthew Cleveland is the other guy we'll be hitting on. Spent two years at FSU and a guy we've confirmed that Carolina has been in contact with at least. So, AJ, real quickly before we dive into Cormac Ryan, who we're going to focus on first, want to give a shout out to our sponsor, MyPrivateFranchise.net. We're going to hit on him a little bit later on the podcast, so stay tuned for that. But Andy Ludicky has an awesome, awesome company and enterprise he's doing over here at MyPrivateFranchise.net, helping others start a new career path, open their own corp, uh, uh, franchises, and just really in a lot of ways build a completely new working life that you know he he's absolutely love with what he's been able to do so stay and, tuned and his are by the way just yeah, yeah I'm, go ahead. I'm dive bombing you right now no, you're good. Go ahead. people need to understand when they, when they think franchise we need to change the way people think yeah uh, and andy wants people to understand franchises are all kinds of things his that he's made a mint off of are dumpsters and porta potties it's crazy to me so man. It, it really runs the gamut of what you can be franchised so yeah. let that little seed there's Not a lot of people out there that just they want to change what they're doing. And I think they need to call them because you never know what you're going to find. Doesn't cost no. anything. And you never know. You don't have to commit to anything. You just kind of see where it goes. Yeah. And he's a prime example. He's a guy that years ago didn't like his job, wanted to do something else, did it. And now he's giving back and, and helping others kind of do exactly what he did. So perfect person to learn so, from. So we've just done, we've just done the read pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's so exactly we'll all you a really quick one later. Yeah. All this stuff's going to, Jacob's going to put all the stuff below the video. You can access it that way. And you can actually yeah. schedule an appointment with him by going on the calendar. Yeah. See, we're doing it now. We're doing it now, yeah, man. This we'll is going to be again. a fun pod. Yeah. Cause the only plan in the pod is Cormac Ryan and Matthew Cleveland. We're just going to let it wing it after. Otherwise yeah, we just wing everything, man. Not a lot of planning that goes on in these, but that, to me, that's the best that's kind the of podcast. Most Keep it organic. Winged wing sponsor read of all time <laughs> shout out andy if, shout out my perfect franchise that's even that. the right way of saying it yeah. <laughs> again we'll hit on it a little bit later on in the show as well but big shout out to my favorite franchise thanks for continuing to to sponsor us um aj i want to focus on cormac ryan first a guy that's been in college for ever um i tweeted out yesterday it feels like he's been playing college basketball even particularly at notre dame for the last 10 years and he didn't even start at notre dame I actually started at stanford under under jared haas as well so six year um uh four kenny Cormac williams Ryan. guarded him at one time i know man that wild it's just it's just crazy yeah. to think of in a lot of ways um and again a guy that's on his ov at the time of this recording um diving into his stats real quick before i kick it to you 12.3 rebounds 4. Point, uh 4.0 assists 2. Point, oh excuse me 12.3 points 4.0 rebounds 2.5 assist shot 40.9 percent from the floor and 34.4 percent from three um a guy six five a guard um so a, a big guard who who who's, has a nice shot and can do a little bit of everything for you again um and did another interesting fact about him did score in double digits in 11 of his last 13 games for Notre Dame last season. I'm not talking about like 10 points, 11 points. I'm talking like 19 points, 18 points, 17 yeah. points. So a guy that, that really he can, he had can a, go off at times. Yeah, he can go off and had a really good ending to the year on a Notre Dame team that, that really struggled for the most part. So AJ, you, you've seen a lot of Cormac Ryan and I've seen a lot of Cormac Ryan in the years that I've been here at Tar Hill Illustrated with obviously with him playing at Notre Dame. But what to you kind of stands out about his game the most? Well, I will say this, if he ends up at North Carolina, and this is totally unofficial because I haven't peeled away any layers, but I'm thinking off the top of my head when you're talking, if he comes to North Carolina, it, it means he will have played in the Dean Dome as a college player wearing three different uniforms. It's crazy, man. That's, he doesn't played there as a true freshman. It. When he was a true freshman at Stanford, they played at Carolina. He scored 14 points that night at four mm-hmm. threes. And he played there at Notre Dame. And then, of course, it would be North Carolina. So we are in a bizarre period in college athletics where things like that are happening all the time. And that would be certainly something unique about Cormac Ryan. As far as the kind of player he is, I've always liked this game. He's a guy that can create his own shot off the dribble. He's a catch-and-shoot guy. Uh, He can handle the ball at the top and run an offense. He can run you a set. 
So I think he's a wing to wing guy. I don't know how much of a corner player he is. I think he's someone that could probably play some three for you. If you go to a, a smaller, like sort of a guard, a three guard offense, he could be a three in that sense. Uh, you know, he's six, five and packs of Wojcik six, five, but I think of Wojcik as more of a three than Ryan. Mm-hmm. I, I think of Ryan as a guy that he's going to extend a defense because he can launch threes. He can launch them from well beyond the, the three point arc that Jalen Withers can as well. So it could pack it packs of Wojcik. So Hubert wants guys that can space. I think Cormac Ryan would be someone who can absolutely help them space. He can get in the lane, hit pull up jumpers. He's, he's just, he's got kind of a, a little bit of an edge to him. And, and I like that. I think Hubert, again, is looking for passionate players. He's looking for guys that play through struggles and keep their passion and focus. And I think Cormac Ryan has proven to be that kind of a guy throughout his career. And really, when you think about it, uh, this past year, I mean, I, I'm a big Mike Bray guy. I think he's a wonderful dude, and he's going to be incredible on ESPN. I think that's where he's going to be. Yeah, he's I think be, be fantastic. He's going to be unbelievable in that. He's, he's mm-hmm. just such a fun guy. But I don't think Notre Dame was totally locked in all the time late. Now, they play a lot of close games. And I think part of it's just because the ACC wasn't very good. And they lost a lot of close games. And, and there were times they played very well. But I just seem it's at times it looked like they were playing out the string. And I, I wonder how much that affected Cormac's numbers. And there were a lot of older guys on that team, too. They had a bunch of older dudes. And they just didn't play anywhere near the expectations. They were in the tournament in 22, won a game or two. And Ryan was 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 one of the big reasons why. I think Cormac Ryan is a nice player. I think if you added him to the roster, you know what you're probably going to get from him. You're probably going to play him a lot. I think he would come in expecting to play a lot. And you, you'd have to kind of make that. I, w- I wouldn't say you make that deal, but you kind of have to make that deal, if you will. So mm-hmm. I do think he's somebody that would be able to achieve a lot of the things that Hubert wants to, as far as spreading the floor, shooters, moxie. He's got a lot of moxie. In fact, wasn't he involved in something with Caleb? Wasn't that him down on the baseline? I think wasn't that so. Cormac Ryan? I think this so. Last year, because Caleb had an incident about twice in two weeks. He had the Michigan incident. Yeah, Michigan incident. I'm pretty sure it was Cormac Ryan. I think you might be right. So, you know, hey, there's a little edge there. I think yeah. edge is good. Oh, you can too. be a basketball player with all your attributes, but if you can add edge to that, not everybody plays with an edge. I think that's better. Yeah. So I think it's a pretty true. solid addition. Mm-hmm. I don't think you, I don't think you wait for a long time for him. Uh, they've brought him in. They brought in uh, the Timberlake kid from Towson as well. An official visit here a couple of weeks ago. And I, I'm not sure if he's committed yet to yet or, but I, what no, we're I hearing he is. is UConn, UConn for him. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't say that they wanted him before Ryan. I think they're just bringing guys in when they could come in. They're just taking a look. Yeah, and nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I, yeah. I think you can go a lot worse than bringing in Cormac Ryan for a year. He's got one year of eligibility left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think he's a, he could potentially be a good fit. I like his size at that guard position as well, and I like his ability to to shoot the ball again it didn't you know 34.4 percent from three last year 40.9 percent from the floor so you know not outstanding shooting numbers by any means but i think what he brings in, in some of the other intangibles he would bring to that team is, is a big positive Let, let's talk about matthew cleveland I, I think real quickly i think he took a lot of hurried shots yeah and notre dame was a team and i think in a right oh, offensive gosh, system so. when when you've got a big like baycott and you've got a guard like davis which Notre Dame had neither. I know Leshevsky was okay at times. Yeah, not great though. He's not going to have to take as many rush shots in North yeah. Carolina. Yeah. So I, 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 that's kind of the way. And by the way, he's got he's got one year. This would be his sixth year in college. He played mm. at Stanford for a year. Had to sit out as a transfer. Remember that role? Yeah, that seems like an eternity ago, to be honest. And that was in that 20, was and then his sophomore year was the COVID year, so he gets that back, so he's yeah. got one more year. He'll be 24 when the season starts. So crazy, we've man. talked a lot about old guys and being old, and Hubert wants to be old. He'll be old. Jalen Withers will be 24 in December. Yeah, I know. I know, man. They're out there. It's just a new landscape of college sports in a lot of ways. Let's talk about Matthew Cleveland. Within the end, we'll kind of talk about summarize these and, and kind of agree or disagree if they're potentially good fits at North Carolina and how might they fit in Matthew Cleveland. You know, you talked about Cormac Ryan being an older guy. Here's a, a younger guy in Matthew Cleveland first two years at Florida state did lead the Seminoles last year in scoring and rebounds, averaging 13.8 points, 7.4 boards, 1.8 assists. Another guy, AJ, that's a 
tall guard, six, seven, two guard can score. Um, just a, a good kind of all around player. Not the, you know, not the most bounciest, most athletic kid you'll ever see in your life, but a guy that has proven in his first couple of years at Florida state that he can be a consistent scorer in the ACC. And I think that's a big positive for anybody you're trying to bring in at North Carolina. Um, so AJ, just real quickly too, 44.5% from the floor last year, 35% from three. So nice shooting averages as well. When you look at Cleveland's game, I know Florida state, another team last year that, that struggled, had a lot of injuries as well. So it's in a way you're looking at Notre Dame and, and Florida state, two guys coming from two teams, at least last year that really struggled. Um, but when you look at Cleveland's game at that six, seven, that really intrigues me at his size. Another thing that really intrigues me as well is the fact that he kind of was the guy for Florida State last year in an injury ravaged season for the Seminoles in which they really struggled. But he proved that he could be that guy in his first two years at at Florida State. So what maybe stands out to you the most about Cleveland's game and and what do you like about what he could potentially bring to the Tar Heels? It dawned on me that they brought in Jalen Withers, who was on the last place team, and they got an OV from a guy who was on the next to last place team. He's a good player. And now we're talking about a guy team. who was on the third to last place team. So yeah. the bottom of the ACC is guys are leaving and they're all going to visit Chapel Hill, or at least talk yeah. to Chapel Hill. It's interesting. It's again, it's we're in such a bizarre time. It's right a different now. landscape, man. If if you talk to the people in Tallahassee about that team. And about Matthew Cleveland, they'll tell you that he took a lot of tough shots because somebody had to take them. They were ravaged with injuries early. Then they played pretty well for a while. And then they struggled late, mm-hmm. had a couple more dudes banged up. Cleveland was sort of a constant. In fact, there were a couple of times uh, I watched them lose. I think it was to Troy early in the year. And I'm looking on the court and saying, how can a team with Matthew Cleveland lose to Troy? The point is that he can be really, really good at times. Carolina mm-hmm. recruited him as well. Recruit. We did. I remember Clint and I doing a Matthew Cleveland podcast about uh, just sort of the targets, some of Roy's targets uh, three or four years ago, four years ago, I guess it was. So he was one of those guys, and a lot of the people on our board just wanted him because he is a six foot seven guard. He's not a guy that could slide down to four and play floor, and this he just wants straight out four out one in which maybe Hubert looks at something like that. But he's a shooting guard. He could play a three, but. I don't, I don't, I don't remember really seeing him in that three role much at Florida State. Although I, I, I you know, because he, Leonard Hamilton always plays big. Yeah, it's always a always huge got a team, big yeah. team, always playing big. So maybe he is a three, and we just only saw him as a two there, or sort of a positionless wing player who can do a lot of things. Who happens to be six foot seven? Maybe that's the best way to describe him. Uh, I think at North Carolina, he'd probably slide more into a three because you've got Wiltry, you've got RJ. Um, we 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 were told a couple of weeks ago that Cadeau was probably going to be coming in, but that's still not been fully ironed out just yet. There's still some 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 stipulations, I guess, at play. So even with Wiltshire and RJ in the starting, if you bring in a guy like Cleveland and start him at the three and you got Withers at the four, I think you can live with that because he's certainly a guy that uh, with his length, he gets threes off. He's not challenged very often out there with his threes. He's got a couple of dri- a game where he's got multiple dribbles where he can get in the lane and shoot a, a pretty pull-up jumper. He's got that. Uh, he he can get a lot of defensive rebounds for you, but he's a pretty good offside, weak side offensive rebounder as well. So I, I like his game. I, I think he does a little bit of everything well and some things at times very well. He can be very streaky from the perimeter. And if you have enough shooters – and you have enough options off the bench, you can afford to have some streaky shooters out there because you got to figure, hey, two guys may be off one night, but maybe one of the other ones is on. And then yeah. you have some good – I think RJ is a guy who would be consistent from the three this year, but maybe Cleveland isn't. So you have those nights where he hits and RJ is doing what he normally does and Withers hits a couple and they could be very, very explosive if that's what they have out there on the floor. I think he fits. Because I think the guy with Matthew Cleveland's talents can fit a lot of places. Yeah. So um, six, right. seven dudes who can shoot and, and rebound and and got a little nastiness to him. I, I think that they fit a lot of places. Is there room for both Ryan and Cleveland at Carolina? Or are they too similar? I know games aren't necessarily um, super similar, but they're the same position for lack of a better word. My understanding is that they want to bring in two more guys from the portal. And if you bring them in, you're loading up on a lot of mid-size guys. 
Mm -hmm. I, I still believe that that they need to bring in someone who can, as a body, as a screener, a rebounder, as a space eater, as someone who can clean up around the rim. You've got to have someone that can play behind Armando. They do. It's, yeah, they do. It's and, and I, and I know that, and David's talked a lot about this when we've done the pods and written a lot about it in our, in, in our mailbag sessions, but he thinks Zayden High is more five now mm. coming in. And Zayden High, but do you want to trust a freshman in that role? It's yeah. kind of tough, especially because I'm telling you, their their mission is going to be win a national championship. They're not going to say it this time around like they did a year ago, no. but he's trying to build himself a team that's that's equal or better than what UConn was at the end this past year. There's no doubt about it, and he should, because at North Carolina, you, you should try to build a national champion every year. So is Zayden High your backup big? Look at what UConn had in the big spot in the backup. There, there, was, there was no drop-off. At times, they were better around the rim. Mm-hmm. You're probably not going to get a guy like that, but maybe get someone who's played a little bit more, someone who's a little bit thicker. I'm not sure that Jalen's going to be that guy just yet, or maybe he is. Maybe Hubert thinks Zayden Hyde, Jalen Washington, even uh, uh, Jalen Withers, for the three of them can somehow figure out a way to to back up Armando collectively, mm-hmm. or if he gets it goes down for an extended period of time. And I think that Hubert might actually like the idea of a, of a five that can step out. So maybe he has what he needs because mm-hmm. they're not talking to any bigs, at least that we know of so far. They're talking to guys in the Cormac Ryan, Harrison Ingram, uh, Matthew Cleveland mold, Paxson Wojcik, Jalen Withers, who they already got in, the Timberlake. These are the guys they've been talking to. I think Hubert wants shot makers. He mm-hmm. wants guys that spread the floor. And I think he'd like to find some guys with an edge. And most of the guys we just mentioned play with an edge all the time. Yeah. So can they both coexist? I guess, but these are guys who want to be happy. They want to play. Wojcik, I think, will accept a reserve role. Withers wants to start. And I think that he's your four. So if you bring in Ryan and, and Cleveland, if you, one of them's not going to start. Because you've got RJ and Wiltshire out there. I can't imagine Wiltshire not starting. So I don't know. If you have to pick one or the other, I would probably go Cleveland as a player because he could play that three some. He is a little bit longer. And I think you can get more production from him on a consistent basis. Yeah. I agree. I, I, for, I was going to ask you that after is if you had to pick one, who would you go with? And for me, it's Cleveland too. I actually. And let me say this, because I did tweet yesterday about Cormac Ryan, and I did say, you know, if I'm Carolina, get him signed up. But I think if you're – because I do like his game, and I do like his experience, and I do like what he could bring to this team. But I think if you're – like we kind of talked about, if you're looking at, all right, we've got to bring it. Carolina needs to bring in one of these two guys. For me, it's Cleveland. More production stat-wise is better stat line than, than Ryan had last year. He's younger. So you, get, you would theoretically, unless he transfers after a year, which wouldn't expect to happen – get you'd have a, him to be around a little bit longer than a guy like Ryan would be. I think that's a positive. And I just think, I just think Cleveland, the fact that he's younger, he's, he's produced and kind of been used to being the guy at FSU. I think coming into a team like North Carolina, where he wouldn't necessarily be expected to be the guy when you've got guys like RJ and, and um, Armando coming back, I think it's a system he could, he could really thrive in. And I do like that edge that he brings a little bit as well. So I guess to answer the question of this podcast, I think they both could fit in at North Carolina. And I think both of their games do translate well to North Carolina, but for us, our both opinions would be, I would go Cleveland over Ryan. If you had to bring one, Well, of let me in. go this. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to say this because Rashad McCants was a two. They played three. Danny green was a sometimes a two who was a three. Um, Cam Johnson kept saying, I can play two. And he's shown that he can at the next level. So I'm two and three. Yeah. It's sort of interchangeable now. I, the the really good Carolina teams on the road, the three title teams, I've said this a few times. I'm going to say it very quickly again. And then 2012, which was derailed by the injury to Kevin Marshall. 2019, the guys were all throwing up the night they lost to Auburn. So 2005, you had McCants at the base, essentially at the three. He was mm-hmm. at the three. You had um, with basically the three. You had um, Danny Green in 2009. You had Justin Jackson in 2017. Those are title teams. And then in 12, you had Harrison Barnes. In 19, you had, you had uh, Cam Johnson. I think Matthew Cleveland's a lot closer to those guys yeah. than anybody we've talked about. Agreed. Including Harrison Ingram. Mm-hmm. And, and Cleveland was pretty highly regarded coming out of high school. 
not mm-hmm. quite what Ingram was, but I think he's been a better college player. Yeah, Carolina was Ingram. after him for sure. And I, and I think you have some of that potential if you decide to play him the big guard at the three, which is what McCants and Green essentially were, then I think you could make it work. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I would, if if both of them call up and there's one scholarship for the two of them and both of them call up within the same hour, you take Matthew Cleveland. Agreed. I think it's that simple. I think a lot of Carolina fans would agree with that. Obviously, let us know if you, if you disagree and get involved on Twitter or, or our premium message boards. We'll post this article, post this podcast. Let us know your opinions on it because I do want to hear from y'all. But, Edge, I think one thing we haven't – this is the last thing I'll say about the, both of them. We haven't really talked about this is we talked about Harrison Ingram in another podcast. And, you know, we, we talked about maybe he's not really the right fit for what North Carolina needs. Probably not worth waiting for him um, it, it, cause it looks like his is, is a, a recruitment that's going to be dragged out over the next few weeks. I think the big plus about these guys, AJ, is they're, they're, they are guys that the proof's in the pudding. They've proven they can produce in the ACC. And I think when you're looking at bringing guys in, isn't that exactly what you want? Don't you, isn't it a safer bet to bring a guy in from the same conference? Not only that you probably know his game a little bit better because you've game planned for these guys in the past, you played against them in the past, you know, a little bit more what they can bring. And you know, for a fact that, okay, you can look at this guy's stats and you can watch this guy's tape and see him producing against the same teams we're going to be playing next year. To yeah. me, that's a positive as well for both of these guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. There, I think there's not as much mystery. Yeah. There's not as much. I think that there was mystery with Nance because he was asked to do something very different than what Northwestern asked him to do. Yeah. So there was mystery. There's no mystery with Matthew Cleveland or Cormac Ryan. There's no mystery with Withers. Yeah. And even Wojcik, I don't think they game plan too heavily for Wojcik, but they saw him. They, they, seen they him, reviewed yeah. their they reviewed their own film and they saw where they made a lot of defensive mistakes against him. Yeah. So there was some familiarity. So I, I agree with that. Yeah, I think if you, anytime you can bring a, a guy that's proven he can produce in the same league you're playing, and those are the guys I would really be focusing on because I, I think they're a little bit safer bets for for what they could bring to your program. So again, guys, to summarize it, I think both of these guys are good fits. I think we lean a little bit more towards Cleveland. I think a lot of Carolina fans probably would as well for a number of different reasons we listed either um, earlier. But again, I think either of these guys at that two position, the size scoring ability and just kind of the all around game they could bring to North Carolina a little bit of that edge too. I think you take either of these guys at North Carolina and wouldn't be too upset about having either of them. So we'll go ahead and wrap this one up again, guys, come get involved on Twitter, uh, our premium message boards. If you're signed up, if you can do it for just eight 33 a month. We want to hear your opinions on these guys as well. And shout out to my favorite franchise.net AJ. We already did an ad read earlier. We'll shout yeah, them out one did. more time again, check out the podcast below. Cause I think that's where you're going to get the most info and get the most understanding of exactly what Andy's doing over there and what exactly he can bring to you at my perfect franchise.net. Check those out. Great conversations, easy to listen to. And again, you'll get a heck of a lot more information that we'll be able to provide in a, in a 45 second ad read. So big shout out to Andy, big thank you to Andy for continuing to sponsor Go switch your career path up. Go do something different. He'll be along every step of the way. And again, 100% free. He doesn't make a penny unless you make a penny. So check him out, myperfectfranchise.net. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell as well. We've rolling out a lot of podcasts this offseason. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Thanks.